Welcome to Aviation World. Welcome to this presentation covering the Electronic Instrument System, or EIS. We now move on to the Electronic Flight Instrument System, or EFA screens, the PFD, and the ND. In this section, we will cover the basics of the information presented on these screens. You will gain a much broader appreciation for what these screens can provide when you experience the procedures phase of this course. We will start with the PFD. The PFD displays all the normal primary flight indications, which include attitude, airspeed, altitude, vertical speed, and heading and track. Let's look at each of these a little closer. These indications are laid out in a conventional instrument T configuration. The PFD also displays other information. The upper part of the display, known as the flight mode enunciator, provides information to the pilots on the current status of the FMS. You will learn much more about the FMS and the importance of the FMA in the procedures phase of your training. We will review the primary flight indications beginning with the attitude display. Attitude information is shown in the center of the PFD. The aircraft is represented by three fixed black and yellow symbols. There is a graduated pitch scale above and below the horizon line. Bank angle is displayed at the top of the attitude indicator and with little tick marks at the 10, 20, 30, and 45 degree marks. Green equal signs are displayed at 67 degrees. The roll index triangle, the little yellow triangle at the top of the blue field that you see here, moves against this fixed scale to show angle of bank. Below the roll index is the side slip index. The side slip index is displayed as a trapezoid. The index moves left and right of the roll index to indicate side slip. It replaces the old fashioned ball in a box or inclinometer. The side slip index is displayed in blue if an engine fails. Turn coordination is normally automatic. The situation you see here wouldn't normally occur, but is presented as an example. In this example, right rudder is required. The left side of the PFD contains the airspeed indicator. The airspeed scale moves behind a fixed yellow reference line and triangle. In this example, the current indicated airspeed is 192 knots. The airspeed trend arrow indicates what the speed will be in 10 seconds if the rate of change remains constant. In this example, the aircraft will accelerate to 203 knots in 10 seconds. The arrow is not displayed if the change is less than 2 knots in 10 seconds. The green mock indication is displayed below the speed scale when the speed is above 0.5 mock. The airspeed target, or bug, is displayed digitally when the speed bug is off the scale. It is displayed as a triangle when the bug is within the current speed range. The speed bug is magenta when it is a managed speed target. Managed speeds are calculated by the FMS. The speed bug is blue when it is a selected speed target, which is chosen by the pilot. The airspeed indicator is capable of presenting many additional symbols representing airspeed related data such as VMAX, VFE, best lift over drag, and others. These symbols are better appreciated and will be discussed in more detail in the procedures phase of this course. The right side of the PFD contains the altitude and vertical speed displays. We will look at the altimeter first. The center of the altimeter contains a green digital readout of your current altitude. A gray analog tape moves behind the digital display. This example shows a current altitude of 2,310 feet. The target altitude is shown digitally at the top of the tape if the target is above the current altitude or below the tape if the target is below the current altitude. In this example, the target altitude is 20,000 feet. When the target altitude is within the current altitude range, it is displayed as a blue box. In this example, 
The aircraft is passing flight level 285 on its way up to a target altitude of 290. Note, there are instances where the altitude target is displayed as a magenta box. Those instances will be discussed in procedures training. Radial altitude is displayed on both PFDs when below 2,500 feet AGL. Two radial altimeters are installed. They measure the distance in feet between the aircraft and the ground. Normally, RA-1 is displayed on the captain's PFD and RA-2 on the first officer's PFD. RA data is supplied to several other systems, such as flight controls and GPWS. The radio altitude display changes in color and size based on the height above ground and proximity to the entered approach minimums. In addition to the visual indications, a synthetic voice announces radio altitude at predetermined heights. The altitude display is capable of several alerting functions. Some of them are shown here. The vertical speed display indicates vertical speed using a green analog needle. The needle moves over a scale graduated in 500 foot per minute increments up to 1000 feet per minute. Beyond that, the graduated scale is basically useless. If vertical speed exceeds 6000 feet per minute, the needle remains pegged. This is not a problem, however. If vertical speed is 200 feet per minute or greater, a digital indication is displayed which provides a readout of the vertical speed in hundreds of feet per minute. In this example, the aircraft is climbing at 900 feet per minute. The vertical speed indications will change color to amber to indicate unsafe conditions as summarized on this screen. The heading indicator is located at the bottom of the PFD. The gray scale moves behind a fixed yellow line which represents the center line of the aircraft. In this example, the heading is 095 degrees. The small green diamond represents the aircraft track and is normally referred to as the track diamond. The selected heading is displayed digitally if it is outside the current display range of the heading scale. It is displayed as a blue triangle if within range. There is no magenta or managed heading bug. The PFD also provides ILS information as shown on this screen. This will be taught in much greater detail during the procedures phase of your training. If you like the video, please click on the like button, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel. The captain and first officer each have a PFD and ND knob located just outboard of the outer DU. The PFD knob is used to turn on the outer DU and adjust its brightness. The ND knob is used to turn on the inner DU and adjust its brightness. The ND knob also has an outer ring which is used to adjust the brightness of the ND weather radar and EGYPWIS terrain display. It is easy to get in the habit of ignoring the outer ring during training because you rarely use the weather radar or GYPWIS in training. Try to develop the habit of turning it on during pre-flight to prepare for line operations. Both the captain and FO have an EFIS control panel located on the glare shield outboard of the FCU. The outer portion of this panel enables the pilot to exercise control over certain PFD functions. The barrel reference knob is used to control the altimeter setting. The current altimeter setting is displayed directly below the altimeter on the PFD. The outer ring of the knob is used to select either inches of mercury or hectopascals, also known as millibars. The knob is pulled to set standard altimeter. The knob is pushed and turned left or right to set the Q&H. The flight director push button is used to turn the flight director on and off. The flight director system activates automatically when AC power is first applied to the aircraft. You can confirm the system is active by the green lights on the FD push button. Flight director indications are also displayed in the FMA portion of the PFD. FMA indications will be discussed in the procedures phase of training. The flight director bars themselves do not appear until takeoff. In this example, the aircraft is in flight and the captain's flight director has been selected off. We will now turn on the captain's flight director by pushing the flight director push button on the captain's EFIS control panel. Notice that the flight director is displayed in the form of vertical and lateral guidance bars. More information about the flight directors will be presented in the procedures training portion of this course. Finally, the LS push button enables you to activate or deactivate the ILS information display on the PFD. You will now activate the ILS display by pushing the LS push button on the captain's EFIS control panel. With the LS push button on, lots of things can be displayed on the PFD. Those things include glide slope, 
localizer, localizer inbound course, localizer identifier and frequency, and DME if it's available. We now move on to the controls on the right side of the EFIS control panel. We will use these controls as we discuss the indications and capabilities available on the nav display.